Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. This is a couple of fellas that I used to work with at the phone company. Remember I said that I had a couple of guys who were going to kind of come help give me some advice on this solar system. And a lot of this equipment is the same type of equipment that they used to work with other than the panels themselves because the phone company generated their own power. I'm Joe and I am retired from the phone company. I've worked in a few other utilities. I've worked for the power company and the gas company at some point in my life. Mostly what we did at the telephone company, Charles and I both did the same type of work. We, we worked on all the electronic equipment that the phone company has out in the field. All those, all those big boxes you see on the corners. We worked on all the equipment was in that and made sure that it would work together. A lot of times it was different manufacturers of equipment. We had to get the stuff worked together to provide services for the customers and the other departments to hand off to our customers. We had uh, copper lines and then we had the fiber lines. Correct. So you had both different, both types of systems. That's correct. Yes, yeah. we, had, we had to be able to work with all the technologies. Plus we worked with, with the power that powered the equipment, the battery backups. We, we worked on anything and everything that was in that cabinet. An inverter is an inverter. A battery is a battery. Correct. So this is not any different. Like I said, the only thing that's different is generating the power from the solar panel. And that's just the source of the power. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it comes from a commercial source or from the sun. So and what? it all has documentation. We'll just read up on the documentation. Read is, the instructions yeah, first. Yes, read oh, them first. Not, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not after you let the smoke out. We of are it. men. We don't read instructions. I'm no, sorry. We're, we're, <laughs> I do. We're, <laughs> I was going to say, we're, unless we're, it comes we're, to we're stuff like this. We're technicians. <laughs> He's a man. We're technicians. <laughs> There's a difference there, you know. Cheers, brother. Yeah, we're technicians. We. We can't fix stupid, but we can fix what stupid does. And duct tape does muffle stupid. I'll give you that one for free. Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to bust open some of these boxes. We're going to look through that stuff, and then we're going to show you what our idea is as far as being able to best serve the homestead here uh, with both AC and DC current. So... Let us get a couple of these boxes out here. We'll unbox it. We're actually looking for some spec sheets and possibly a manual that may be in there. If not, I'll have to order that up. Hey, you guys like this infantry hat? We had some... Joe was here last time when I was building the outdoor kitchen, and uh, he hasn't been here since then, so there's a whole lot of this he hasn't seen. But I had a few comments on the hat with the emblem up there. Uh, tell us what uh, what your background is as far as that goes. Oh, well, the yeah, the shoulder. It's actually a shoulder patch. I don't, when I was with the army, I wore it on my left shoulder. It, it indicated what my current unit was, which it's a fourth infantry division patch. When I was with the army, I was at the time they called it a wheeled vehicle operator. I drove jeeps, deuce and a half, five ton trucks, pulled fuel tankers, water tankers equipment, food, troops, ammunition. That was what I did with the Army. All right, we'll dig some boxes out and we'll see what we're going to get Here into. Go. Left, right. If the left, yeah, see that? L, left. Yeah. yeah. Loser. <laughs> Loopy. Folks, this video is sponsored by Signature Solar. Uh, so I'm going to let these guys open this charge verter up and kind of explain to you what it does. A book. All right. Big start guide. We like those. As 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 technicians, as long as Charles and I have been technicians, books are our friends. We do know how to read, and we do a lot of it. So what the charge verter does, as it says here, it's your AC charger and 48 volt battery. It is essentially the interface between the inverters and the rest of the solar system, and a and a portable generator, a gas or diesel generator that, that allows you to charge the batteries with the generator when the solar panels aren't necessarily getting enough sunlight to create power via the, the solar. 
pre-wired for a 240 volt 30 amp circuit uh -huh. with a twist lock plug. Ah, uh -huh. and it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, real pretty. What's next, Richard? Well, that's it. No, I'm teasing. We got more. Guys, we got uh, several multiple boxes in there that look alike, so we're not getting them all out, but they're just going to kind of show you what came in this kit. This is uh, where you're suspecting the wires that go to the panels themselves. Um, that, that, it, it looks like it's going to be the feed wire that goes from the panels to the inverter. Okay. Because of the, especially because of the length. Then Joe's got... These, I do believe, are going to be battery interconnect connect cables because of the how heavy they are. These right. are a the number one okay. AWG. We've got some goodies down in there. How about that? So oh, along huh? with the Check it out. We got a battery string. We got extra connectors that we can, if we need to trim, mount new ends. And mount new ends. Yeah. All and right. This is the crimper for it. I'm all that came as part of the kit. I'm assuming that this box. It's a surge protector. There we go. A nice fancy surge protector. How about that? Engineered for both AC and DC electric systems. This is the brains of the whole system. This is the off-grid inverter. Another book that we're going to keep and read through <laughs> an awful lot. We love books. We're not going to take it out of the box right now. Yeah. That's what that, the unit looks like. That, that will be mounted in our hut that Richard's going to put together. And that'll be what monitors the solar output from the panels, monitors the batteries, and monitors the AC that's going out to the to the uh, home and the, the shop for Richard. Just the brains of the unit. Kind of like Charles. Uh, Y'all are your unit. Which one of you is the brains? Yeah, we ain't figured <laughs> that out yet. <laughs> okay. It says EG4 lithium battery. And guys, all of this is 48 volts. <laughs> yeah, it's a 48 volt, 100 amp per hour battery. Now explain to them, what's the difference between the 12, the 24, and the 48? I, b I believe what Richard's referring to is the is the formula of the difference between the relationship between voltage and current. So as if you're using a, a lower voltage battery, you would need a higher current to push the voltage further. Well, with your higher voltage, they work inversely. So the higher your voltage, the less current you need to drive the current and the voltage in the same direction. I just couldn't get the words out. Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, that's kind of like what I was thinking. Yeah, along yeah that's, those lines. That's, that's, that's the main difference. Because they say that 48 volt is a much better system than the 24 it's, or the It's or just the more, it's more efficient and more effective. Right, right. There's a rack system also that came with the kit. All this will be rack mounted. Unpacking this is to get them familiar with what was already shipped here. Yeah, here's where your, your big heavy, some of your heavy <laughs> connections are going to tie down. Ground and negatives. Here's your positive over here. This came off of right here. So this this is where your okay. Yeah, it's a guard. Good. This is this is where those heavy one amp. As, uh, and, I, and I'm making an assumption right now. Number one. Just just from experience and looking at the size of the connectors, but this is where those one amp, the red and black one amp. Number one. Or number one one amps. I'm sorry. The the, the number one cables will go, and this this is. Will then connect and then to the battery side over there, and we have a ground as well. Yeah. So don't confuse the two. All right, folks. This is where the batteries are going to house at, right here. Mm, each each shelf here is for a battery. One, two, three, four, five. It's got room for six strings, six batteries. Yeah. You know, hey, that's that's basically the gist of the system. Uh, I'll show you a panel here in this in a minute. We're just kind of looking over all this material to see what we've got to, to play with here. The door, the, door, the door will come out of the way from when we're actually working on it. Stop me. Technical difficulty. Ah, click. Yeah. Operator headspace. Mm, something <laughs> like that. So, each of these rack mounted batteries mm -hmm. are probably made up of four 12 volts inside that 
metal box. Well, being that it's lithium ion technology, I know on your, on like your hybrid cars, the batteries are somewhere around 2.3 volts. So it could be more. Well, we probably in the spec sheet, it'll tell us just how many cells make up a 48 volt battery. And we can find that out, look at it. There's gotta be a spec on it somewhere. Sort of like if you take one of those lantern battery apart, you'll find a bunch of D-cells in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got 16, these are 400 watt panels and I've got 16 of them. So my idea is to put eight in one string and then have another row of eight. So what Joe is actually looking at is the specs on it. But this is the back side of one, and then this is the front side of the other. So the back side of it looks just like this. Since they're bifacial, uh, this is supposed to pick up another 10% uh, off of ambient air, which would be on the back side of where the sun is actually hitting, so it would be on the opposite side there. And like I say, it's supposed to give you another 10%. So they consider these, what, 410 I believe watt that's panels, the same, yeah. yeah able to do I've already showed them the power needs that I have for the cabin which is very minimal because all of the ranges are propane um, so I should be able to generate probably more than what I could use on a daily basis with the amount of panels that I've got here so friends we've got our first row of posts mounted here what my idea is to make another row in front because it's going to make everything a lot handier down here for cleaning and so forth Plus, I want to be able to change my angle. So, my idea is to mount two by sixes with a one inch bolt. That way, the top of it will be able to pivot so I can angle it. And we're facing due south with these posts. So, I'll have a row that will actually be able to uh, change in the winter and the summer. And then I'll have another row in the front of that. Um, I went as far as I could get without digging a huge hole was 30 inches. But I believe that uh, with the winds we get around here, that should be sufficient, don't you think? Should be. Uh, yeah. You taking your elevation down up to get your next row? No. Everything will be set from that elevation there. And okay. then these, I've already looked at it. Be higher. It, these will be a little bit higher than the front ones. That way you don't get a shade. Right, because we don't want the front ones to shade the back ones. So kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, the back row will be a little bit higher, kind of like this. We had originally thought we were we would mount the hut kind of right in this area here, but then we got to talking and, and everything, and we came up with an idea about moving the little. When I say hut, it's just a place to house all the equipment, basically. So it'll be a little mini hut, uh, probably about six foot by eight foot, something like that. Kind of like a shed for some people. Yeah. yeah. Don't we need the batteries separated by a firewall in the same area? I know we didn't do that with the phone well, company, did we? With, well, with their, but they're in an enclosed rack. Yeah. I, did not, I did not know that the batteries were going into an enclosed okay. rack. So we don't actually so, have to have No, that. That, that would be, they'll be fine all okay. in the same, okay. same room, environment, whatever. You don't have to build anything. No, it should them. be ventilated. Yeah, we That's will have given. we will have a climate control. And it's, its operating temperature is is it can only operate at 32 degrees Fahrenheit is as low. I've read that in the spec already too. So okay. we, you, we you may we have want to it above freezing. You may have to consider warming it in the winter time. Okay. Well, yeah. if I have it insulated well, a building that side wouldn't take much heat, would it? No, mm -hmm. and the equipment's going to be giving off heat. 110 right. bulb usually will warm up above freezing, but it won't cool itself. No, so no. we will have to do that in the summertime. Yeah, you may you'll have, have to have a fan. either have vents that you can open or fans that run just just right. to keep just to keep the heat down. You don't have to cool it, but you at least have to dissipate the heat that it's generating. Right. So we thought, you know, could we come up with a better idea? And that's what we're fixing to show you right now. Yeah, take two. Richard's yeah. laughing. Hold on, please. When you get three retired Re individuals yeah. retarded? together, retarded, <laughs> retired. Uh, some of the tales that you can tell, but you discussing really... the layout of the homestead here and everything, we've kind of come up with the idea that mounting the mini hut right here, because y'all remember this sawmill is going to go, right? The old sawmill building. Well, we always steals the camera time. Because we got in, in idea, you know, of putting a 
um, gazebo over there on that end, maybe a place to kind of pitch horseshoes and a little campfire area. So that little mini hut could go right here. We've only got about less than 50 feet to the cabin, probably about 50 feet down to the workshop. We're about maybe 60 feet from the solar panels. So the DC would only have that far to run and then the AC uh, not far to run to the cabin and or the workshop and we could actually even hit the outdoor kitchen with some if we decide to put a microwave in there no I'm just teasing no microwaves everything is cooked over the fire right Joe yes Joe Joe's admiring his muscles over there <laughs> we're discussing something else completely different Richard so. we were talking about your horseshoe pit I heard Chuck Norris when he pitches horseshoes the horse is still attached oh is he yeah, yeah okay. we're wearing them horses well hey we're country so they're still attached to the mule I thought the mule was doing the pitching. <laughs> no, that's the other team. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, sure, but they sure thought the mules they the thought that that was probably a little bit better of an idea than mounting it uh, way down there. So my idea is to go ahead and get the frame built down there, get the panels mounted, get the little mini hut built, get my trenches open with the conduit laid in it, this is the last time you'll see them until I get to that point right there. Then they're going to come out just to make sure I don't blow anything up up here on the mountain. And they're going to start helping me connect all the dots and put it all together. Yeah, he, he wants somebody else around that he can blame for blowing stuff up. That's why he's bringing us in to hook it up for him. Right, because he's exactly right. If it blows up, I can't say that I did it. Right? Oh, yeah. We can. You don't have to. <laughs> Oh, great and powerful wizard. Yeah, but I, I think for no more than um, that, the panels that, you know, we didn't have with the phone company, everything else they're already familiar with. I don't think we're going to have any problems hooking this up. Do y'all, this should be a breeze, right? What time's lunch? What time's lunch? <laughs> but anyway, guys, uh, appreciate Charles and Joe coming up here to help us out, uh, get all this planned out. The purpose of today was to try to make sure that all of our heads were straight and that I didn't come up with something different outside of the plans that we had together. Which one? Say goodbye, Richard. Yeah, no. Anyway, guys, goodbye, thanks so much Richard. for hanging out. Right con Dios. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.